Hello and welcome to today's video. Today is the first in my series of Dye Mine ink reviews, which I'm focusing on for this month. Dye Mine is an ink brand I have loved for, well, since the beginning of my fountain pen journey, I just find the inks to be great colors, well, you know, well behaved, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I thought I would do a month of just Diamine reviews, and today I'm starting with an ink I have enjoyed for a long time, and that is Diamine Matador. This is a really funky red. Uh, like, Diamine have a number of really great reds, Red Dragon, Oxblood, even the lighter ones, like the Poppy Red and Stra Wild Strawberry, whatever it's called, you know, a lot of really lovely red inks. Diamine Matador is a... Uh, one of those ones that I think is actually kind of cool because it's got a lot going on, which we'll see in a couple of different uh, papers and things I'm going to show it on. But this is a colouring card I thought I'd show it on here. Good depth, nice shading, and uh, let's look at it on some paper. First up, I have it here on Tomo River paper. This is a 68 GSM Tomo River paper, the old stuff, the good stuff that we love. Um, I had it in two pens, a Twisby Go uh, with a broad nib and a Twisby Go with an extra fine nib, and I've done a bit of writing with both. This is an ink I've been using uh, for a couple of years, so uh, I kind of know my way around it pretty well and enjoy it. One of those reds I turned to along, oh, sorry, I should have mentioned before, Monaco Red. Uh, when I turn to red inks, I tend to go for things that are a little less um, bright, vibrant red and go for things that have a bit more depth to it. So let's talk about this ink. Uh, five points. Okay, so a couple of these are going to remain this, the same throughout all of this month of reviews. They're made in Liverpool, England since 1864, so they've got a great track record. And they are regarded as one of the leading brands of safe inks. So that's inks that are safe for fountain pens, that are clean, that are, uh, you know, don't have pigments and all those kinds of stuff. Really super safe inks for pens. Okay, the next point I have here is that it's got an interesting depth of tones. And I say tones because it is multiple. We'll talk about it a little bit in the performance, but there's a lot of different colors you can sort of see coming through when you look at like that swatch and when you look at the uh, the coloring card, that is, it's, it's got a lot of nice depth to it. The other thing I'm gonna mention here and probably mention on a few other of these is of course that it is super affordable. Um, you know, diamine inks are, are widely available and are not super expensive, which is great. So let's now talk about the performance of this ink. Okay, I love this ink because of the tones of the reds, the browns, the oranges, and pink that all come through. You can see when I did the water test, a little bit of pink is really showing through there. And uh, if you look at the chromatography, we get pink, 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 a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow. It's just got huge depth in it, and it makes this ink really interesting. It has smooth flow, not super wet, but definitely wet enough, and it is safe and a fair cleaner. So when you're cleaning it out of pans, um, you know, it doesn't take, it's not so saturated that it takes, you know, tons and tons of washing or doesn't stain or anything like that. It has a fair performance on lower end paper, which we'll see in a second, good saturation, and it's vibrant, but it's easy on the eyes. So when I'm using an ink uh, like something like this, one thing I really look for is an ink that uh, stands out because you, I don't, I personally don't use reds for everyday writing. I tend to use reds for things like uh, you know, underlining or correcting or, you know, those kinds of things in my note taking. I don't use them a lot, but when I do, they're to stand out on the page. And this one does. But what I mean by easy on the eyes is when you write with some bright colored inks, and I find oranges to really hit this one hard, is that uh, you, like, they tend to make your, they tend to like ache in your eyes after a while. It's a silly thing to say, but you know what I mean? You can sort of, Whereas this, it's, it's got enough depth and it's muted enough that it's not like a huge, huge contrast in that respect. Extras, it's got good shade, no shimmer, little to no sheen. Like, there's a couple of points where you, like, you can kind of see like a little bit of like something, but, uh, you know, it's not really sheen. And mid to low water resistance. So it moves around a lot, so you're going to lose a lot of detail, you're going to lose a lot of definition, but you should still be able to make out what was written there. Let's now look at it on some other paper. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So here I have student notepad paper. This is a Spirex notepad lecture pad, you know, very much student notepad paper. You can see the colour is a little more muted. It looks darker here, um, and uh, there's definitely less shading. It uh, doesn't feather particularly much, which is nice. And actually, on the reverse, we see that in comparison to some other inks even on this page, 
uh, it performs relatively well. Uh, of course, it's going to come through. This is not fountain pen friendly paper, but it is not like just blanket pouring through. Next, we have this on copy paper. This is ATGSM uh, Reflex copy paper. Good quality copy paper here in Australia. Uh, and actually, it performs once again fairly well. The colour is once again muted. Not too much feathering. There's a little bit going on there. Uh, but the reverse once again shows the same thing as we saw on the notepad paper. It comes through a little bit, but uh, I think that's what you would expect from a, particularly from a broad nib like that. Now we have ATGSM Rhodia paper, and uh, I've done both another swab here. You see lovely, some lovely depth of colour coming through there, particularly the browns and the oranges on this paper. Uh, it performs well, as you would expect. There's no feathering. Uh, you can see it's fairly wet, um, and then when I hit it with a water brush, um, you can see that it moves around quite a lot, but there is still like that vague sort of definition of it there. If we look at the reverse, uh, it's performed very, very well. It, it's showing through because it's a vibrant color, but it's not actually bleeding through at all. Talking about performance now on Toma River paper, you can see, if I hold up nice and close, it's beautifully clean uh, writing uh, from both pens, the extra fine and the broad. Toma River is a very fountain pen friendly paper. It's ink resistant, so the ink sits on the top, which is why we get you know some nice bit hits of shading and of course sheen when it's appropriate. And if we look at the reverse of this page, nothing comes through, even the swab there really doesn't come through much at all. It is a very well behaved ink. If we do a quick colour comparison now, here is Diamine Matador, and what I've done is, as I will always try and tend to do, because it's one of my favourite ink brands, I try and find like a Robert Oster that it either has something in uh, in in common with, or that shows a particular colour family within the ink itself. So I've chosen uh, Rubine, which uh, has some of the pinks and orange sort of that you can sort of see coming through in that mid to lighter shading there. Uh, it's probably more pink than Matador, uh, but something that is more red than Matador is the Waterman Audacious Red. So this is like a stock standard bright, vibrant red. You can just see the depth and how it's slightly more muted. It's a little easier, a little warmer uh, than audacious red. So let's talk about the price now and what I'm going to do for all of these inks is price them on the 30ml bottle and the 80ml bottle. Um, now in Australia these retail for 30ml for $8.95 and the 80ml for $19.95 which puts it in a very very good place per mil of ink. Um, that's the that's kind of like the leading price that you find here in Australia. It can be a little bit more expensive, uh, but these prices sort of do vary depending on where you get them from. Anyway, in the US, it's seven dollars fifty for the thirty mil and sixteen fifty for the eighty mil. But Diamond, of course, being a UK based company, if you go to somewhere like Colt Pens, you can get this at amazing prices. £2.45 for the thirty mil and £6.25 for the eighty mil, which uh, is even by conversion is a ridiculously low price, which I love. And a lot of these inks um, are available either on their own in cartridge form or in packs that include the cartridges of this. So I've given uh, Diamine Matador a four out of five. I really like the ink. It gets points for the to color tones, those beautiful underlying colors that I just love seeing in the shading. For performance, it's, you know, it's safe, it's good. And of course with Diamine for value. 80 mils of ink in Australia for 1995. Just to put that into context alongside, say, Robert Oster ink, which is in a 50 mil bottle, which costs $21, and that's made here in Australia. So it's actually a pretty, pretty good price, and you are getting a very high quality ink. So this was Diamine Matador, uh, a beautiful, beautiful red ink that I really, really enjoy. Um, I hope you found this video about this ink interesting and useful. Please like and subscribe, hit the notifications button, and uh, get in touch if there's anything you'd like me to look at, or if there's a way you would like to support this channel, I would love to hear from you. It's your support that actually makes these videos possible. And in the meantime, until my next Diamine review, enjoy your pens and inks, and I'll talk to you soon.